So, it's time for a little story. Over the last three weeks or so, I've been in the process of making the follow-up video to my rather successful State of the Meta video. The video will be talking about exotics in Destiny 2, and basically sorting them into another not tier list video, where instead of giving things concrete tiers like A, B, C, or S, we explore the guns in a more nebulous way. To make that video, I've had to sit down with every single exotic weapon. I'm not covering heavy weapons for obvious reasons, but between the kinetic and energy slots, that's 60 weapons. 60 different weapons, all with their unique mannerisms and personalities. And I've had to become the living embodiment of the meme. Just adapt, bro. It's been a long journey, and it's far from over. If you're watching this now, there's a very good chance that I'm still live on Twitch, audibly sobbing when I use Fighting Lion. And since I've had a lot of time to work on this project, I've come to some pretty wild realizations about the stuff I've been testing. However, the strangest one, by far, is this. I think that Destiny 2, the space magic looter shooter, has made me a better video game player. I know, I know, but hear me out on this. I promise I'm not full of shit. Well, not that much anyways. I know what you're thinking. How can Destiny 2, of all video games, be the catalyst for becoming a better player? There's so much stuff in the game, at a base level, that invalidates the improvement you and others can reasonably make. Yeah, there is. And I want to address that. Over the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about the lack of balance around Destiny 2. It's got cheesy weapons, cheesy abilities, and if another gun like Lorenz Driver gets added in, we'd be one slice of cheese away from a proper charcuterie board. Which actually sounds rather delicious, but the whole point is that cheese is considered a bad thing. Cheese as it pertains to first person shooters and the art of tactical gameplay is definitely bad as it undermines the value of strategy and outplaying your opponents on a pure skill basis. Some folks have tried to rally against the idea that Destiny is cheesy, telling people to adapt or to focus instead on the gaps in their knowledge that would explain the decision making behind a doomed play, that they should seek to be introspective about their failings rather than blame Bungie for every little thing. Like, for example, there's a small YouTuber with a really rather weird British accent that made half a dozen videos on something called Game Sense, but I mean, really, it can't be that good because half the comment section chooses to simp over his voice, calling him daddy on occasion. Wild. Leaving aside the odd pompous prick or two, the fact is, Destiny 2 is very far from a competitive shooter, and it never really tried to be outside of the first year of its existence. It was always the hardcore community that pushed it to be something that it wasn't, partially because the potential really is there for all to see it, Loads of community tournaments that have been held over the years have been exceptional spectacles, but mainly because it was just damn fun to play. It was so damn fun to play that some people wanted the game to evolve with them, for their time and dedication to perfecting their skills to actually mean something. For the rest of us, the choice was simple. Either we treated PvP like an occasional experience at best and a joke at worst, or we committed to getting better because we like being good at the games we love. For those that chose the latter, we had to do it ourselves. We created communities like the tribe full of like-minded people which you can find over at discord.gg forward slash nomad. We made content to explain concepts that helped us better ourselves. Since the game does a bad job of reinforcing good PvP habits to its largely casual and transient crowd, YouTubers like Shadow Destiny picked up the slack with excellent videos like the 4060 rule. In the absence of a true in-game ranking system that drew clear lines in the sand, how good someone really is comes down to perception, where they usually end up on the leaderboard, and how high the funny number at the end of their row is. If that number was over a 2.0, and you could put yourself near the top in every activity you tried, you'd be good enough in Destiny 2. But look, that's not what this game is about. It's not what it's really about, is it? And it's not even vaguely trying to be something it's not. This game? is a looter shooter first, PvP game second, third, or even fourth. It's not why people come through the door, but it is a key reason as to why they maybe stay when the PvE content runs dry. I've come to accept that over the last few months. I'm learning to stop caring about being the person that makes the best improvement content, stop caring about how trials could be made better, and instead I'm focusing more on how I can have fun with the game that I'm in love with. And in the process, 
I hope that you'll also see the game as exciting and as enriching of a pastime as I do. So, in that vein, I decided to take on the state of the meta video in a non-traditional way. The not tier list approach resonated so well that I adopted the same approach for the exotic video. And in the process of sitting down and testing every exotic, I've come to greatly enjoy the challenge of learning how to be somewhat proficient with each weapon. And it's had a strong effect on me. Making that video has become an exercise in testing my own knowledge with the game. It's forced me to come to terms with the fact that maybe I'm not as good of a player as I thought I was. Sometimes it's warranted, like when I really struggle to make Crimson work. Other times I definitely felt like I was beating myself up needlessly, like when I was forcing myself to make Graviton lads look good. It wasn't good, not even slightly. Each exotic is a unique spin on the already numerous weapon archetypes out there. Some bend the rules even further to offer a truly unique experience. Understanding each and every one of these variations and the experiences they seek to offer you in the Crucible requires a rewriting of what you think is right and wrong, what is widely accepted, and what is simply hearsay from Reddit. You have to go in with an open mind and, crucially, an open heart. Some of these exotics are going to offer experiences you don't like or you're not comfortable with, but that doesn't mean they're bad. For many of us, our experiences with any weapon can be boiled down to a single activity playthrough before a decision is made on whether something is good or bad. That's not enough time to be informed, but it's plenty of time to achieve a feeling, and then seek out opinions that either contradict ourselves to the point where we're convinced to give it another go, or to validate what we thought of it to begin with. We like ticking boxes, but we like it more when someone's around to tick them for us, or to show us how to hold the pen. But to truly understand, time is required to form a thorough opinion. It's why my friend Critbuff refuses to review a weapon unless he's put 1000 kills on it. This time is a luxury many do not have, but it's important to find it to truly start thinking for yourself in order to secure the pieces of the puzzle that work uniquely for you. Luckily for me, since this is somehow my job now, I decided to afford myself the time that previously proved elusive. What I found was that my flexibility in how I approached the game was severely tested. With every gun, a new playstyle had to be developed. To play as I normally did would be to neglect the value of its strengths and dismiss the learning opportunity of its limitations. So I adjusted. I adapted. It was not comfortable. It was painful. And many times live over on Twitch, I grew frustrated and even swapped out the exotic for another because I just couldn't make it work. But as I worked my way down the list, I realized that whilst there was some good and bad exotics, the common thread was ultimately me. I had to change, and I had to figure out what it was about me that prevented me from jibing from the weapons I was reviewing in the first place. After some self-gameplay review, I found myself to be a generally impulsive player. I have a nasty habit of being in two modes. Either I leapt without looking and hoped for the best, or I looked before leaping and then leapt when I knew I shouldn't have. Essentially, erratic decision making was costing me time and energy to form an opinion on a weapon. So I gave myself a simple directive. Only leave cover if you're confident you can secure a kill. It required discipline and a conscientious resolve. And the effect it had on my game was immediately noticeable. I started dying less. I paid more attention to my initial positioning and looked for places that simultaneously gave me a great view of the fight and a safe passage to disengage. I became more aware of the enemy, how they played, and what they had in their hands to engage me with. I refreshed my understanding of the basics of gunplay in Destiny 2, and it helped me tailor my approaches depending on the weapon in hand and the situation I found myself in. This one directive made me think critically mid-game, and by forcing myself to be disciplined, it helped me refocus on the objective itself, figure out if the weapon is good or bad by letting it shine. The biggest obstacle to achieving this objective was myself, and a revisiting of the basics of good gunplay in Destiny 2 sidelined my emotional instincts. Every game moving forward became less and less of a chore, and more of an exercise in serenity and practicing good habits. It's like I was meditating. The games just flew by, and even the worst weapons, even the worst exotics, didn't seem so bad. By taking on the challenge of making a video on ranking exotics in PvP, I was pulled in many different directions as a player. I was an aggressor, a laner, a team shooter, a willing observer, and a support player. 
I was all of these things, switching between roles and playstyles at will, to suit not only my own purpose, but the purposes of what the match demanded of me. I still wanted to play to win. It helped me see my enemy through many different lenses, and helped me understand them better. And as the quote goes, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. The honest reckoning with the diversity that Destiny 2 offers has genuinely elevated me as a player. It has taught me many new traits, like the ability to stay calm despite the bullshit, like respecting the tools that people chose instead of being triggered by them simply because something didn't go my way. It's made losing a little bit more enjoyable compared to the past because I'm not as concerned with the immediate result or how well I did anymore. I find myself enjoying the experience because I'm looking to learn from it. That's something very few games have done for me in my 29 years. Now granted, the fact that I've essentially forced myself into a situation that 99.9% .9 of the population can't relate to in order to achieve a level of zen in a video game should sound the alarm bells about said video game. And maybe about the person too, if we're being fair. Destiny 2 is a game that has a shit ton of faults, especially when you look past the surface of what's on offer. The PvP in this game is not a thorough or fleshed out experience by any means, and there isn't a consensus in this vast community about how seriously it should be treated. I will say that there's a certainly a normalization of feeling angry towards this video game when other competitive gaming communities would simply dismiss you for being an entitled crybaby. But those games actually have the structure from the ground up to prove and improve yourself. And Destiny 2 really doesn't. So yeah, this game is not perfect by any means, but it's still bloody good fun. And if you're so inclined, this game can change your perspective for the better, if you let it. F I've just made another self-improvement video.